sedge fishing, uh, of course we're using nymphs shallow, nymphs deep, uh, dry flies, emergers, so we have a little bit different rigs for those. Now here's a, you could call it a dry fly or a cripple, which is kind of like an emerger, whatever, it floats. And so you're just going to take some light tippet, uh, actually not these, to tell you the truth, even though this is 7X and 6X, this is fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is real hard for fish to see, but it also sinks. Well, that's going to be pulling your dry fly down. So I probably wouldn't go as heavy as 5X for most midge fishing, but, you know, the point is this is not fluorocarbon, and that's what you're going to want for a dry fly, otherwise it's going to be sinking all the time. So don't use fluorocarbon, but just a standard rig with plenty of tippet, maybe two up to three feet. Long tippet does help you get a long float. Now, maybe you're having trouble seeing that fly, or especially with a nymph. Now, I sometimes, you know, with a midge larva or pupa like this one, I have put floatant up to within just a few inches of the, of the fly and then watched my leader. When my leader twitches, I set the hook. Well, you got to be fishing pretty close to see your leader twitch. So what a lot of anglers do is they'll take a fly that's easy to see, like this parachute with a bright wing, and they'll tie some, again, real light tippet off the bend of the hook, and then attach that to the pupa. Now, some people will actually do that with a dry fly. Instead of that pupa, you might have this floating fly. And same thing, even though this fly is up there where you can see it, it still is so small that a much bigger dry fly is going to be much easier to see. And I, you know, every, there's all kind of, there are all kinds of debates about how much tippet should be between that dry fly and another tiny dry fly, another midge and how much should be between the dry fly and the midge larva or, or you know, pupa. <laughs> so I, I usually don't use a lot for the pupa because I don't want it too deep. I figure they're taking them off near the surface, you know, 8, 10 inches. With a dry fly, it might be a little longer, might be foot and a half, something like that, a couple of feet maybe at most. And then you've got the deep midge nymph, that is larva or pupa. And, of course, with some of them, they have a little bead on them to help get them down. But, you know, if that water's moving much, it's going to be a trick to get it down. So, above that, a comfortable distance, a safe distance, you're going to put some kind of weight. That could be a big, heavy nymph, or it could be a split shot, like one of these. And, you know, when we put that split on there, we want something to stop it. Otherwise, it'll just keep sliding down the leader. So, I've got a little knot here. That can be a stopper knot, or you can even take your tippet and cut it and retie it. But uh, I don't, you know, maybe this is just me, but I don't like my fly too close to my weight. It just seems like it looks unnatural, and I, maybe I give the fish a little too much credit, but I'll have at least 8 inches, if not a foot, typically. Some people will go much closer. Up that leader, or I should say, after you get to the leader, here's our tippet knot, and you and then we get up, and when you set the depth, then you have some kind of indicator. Now that might, that's kind of a large one, but certainly easy to see. And uh, I would probably go to a little smaller one that would be more subtle, but the point is, you, you, you know, this is a corky, you slide it up the leader before you tie the fly on, and then you push in the toothpick to lock it in place. And that's a rig I would use for fishing the uh, nymph that imitates midge larva or pupa fishing it deep down around the along the bottom of a river and those are the rigs that I use for my most of my midge fishing in rivers right there and they will they work and I've come to trust them over a lot of years